Hi everyone and welcome to today's Maths Boost Revision session. My name's Zoe and I'm one of the school's college liaison assistants here at the University of Chester and today I am joined by Dr Rian Taylor and she is one of the lecturers in Mathematic, mathematics. Sorry, uh, She'll be running today's uh, revision session. Would you like to say hello? Hello. <laughs> You'll see her shortly anyway, because she'll be running the presentation, as I said. So just before we go to the presentation, I just want to explain a little bit how the session is going to work today, because you can get involved. We want you to get involved and we want you to ask some questions if you'd like to. OK, so to do this, please feel free to use the chat that's on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, so Rian might ask you some questions and if you just pop them in there and then we can um, I'll tell Rianne the, the answers that you said and hopefully you've got all of the correct answers and um, but also if you've just got any general questions if there's anything that you're confused about please just let us know and then we can get that sorted via the chat function for you if anyone asks a question as well that you also would like to be asked just pop and um, just tick that you'd like it that you like it sorry and then we know that a few people want it to be asked and then we're likely to get to that one before we get to any of the other ones um, I'll also collate any uh, questions that are maybe that can be left till the end of the session and I'll ask these to Rianne at the end as well but if it is something you need answered there and then we'll get those asked for you. Okay so that should be it from me like I said if you have got anything already now just pop it in the chat and I'll get back to you. So I'll go over to you Rianne if that's okay. Okay thanks thank you. Oh, hello. Um, so a nice short and sweet session today on logs and exponentials. Um, because it's coming towards the end of the academic year, I'll assume that everybody has done this topic. I think you do this one in year 12 anyway. Um, and a lot of revision at this point. So all your laws of indices you'll already know. I've just put them up there um, and they're all on the notes online too so that you can just have something to refer back to. The important cases there are a to the zero is one, anything to the power zero is one, um, and then we've got one for the square root two. So we'll use a lot of these laws of indices when we're doing our logs. So make sure you're up to date with your laws of indices. Um, and then you should be really confident with logarithms. So if we have log of a to base b, um, equals c, then that's the same as a equals b to the power c. Um, it's not the nicest order that we usually have it in, and it's not the easiest one to remember, but this is why it just takes loads of practice. So I've put all the laws of logarithms there. If we're adding them, that's log a times c. Log a minus log c is the same as log a divided by c, just like your laws of indices. Uh, we have log base a of 1 is 0 because anything to the power 0 is 1, it's the same. And then log base a of a is 1 because a to the power 1 equals 1. And um, we've got our power law there as well at the end. So if we have log of a to the power n, then we can bring that power down to the front. So I'll start with some nice solving equations with these laws. Um, our first one, so we have base 3 in these logs, so when I want to get rid of that, the opposite of this will be 3 to the power of both sides. Um, we have 2x plus 5 in one bracket and 4x minus 1 in the other. These two are minus each other, so that's the same. Using our log laws, we can do log base 3 of 2x plus 5 divided by 4x minus 1 and that equals 2. Um, to get rid of our logs then and to start solving this equation we just take 3 to the power of 2 which is the other side or do 3 to the power of both sides and then we have a nice um, equation just in terms of x then so 2x plus 5 equals 9 times I'll move that 4x minus 1 over to the other side um, and then we can just multiply it out get the x's on the same side and solve for x. So those last probably four or five lines are quite nice. It's just using your log laws initially and rearranging it at the start. So each of these questions do step up quite a lot in difficulty. So that was my nice easy one to start with. The next one that we have is 
log to the base 5 of x plus 2 log to the base 5 of x equals 4. And we've got to give our answer in the form of a. We'll have some n through here, some n through of c. Um, and we've got to just find those integers a, b and c for this one. That's probably the trickiest part. Um, but to start with, this one's quite nice. So we've got log to the base 5 of x plus 2 log to the base 5 of x. You can do this a few ways, either using the power law to take that 2 up to the top. I think I've done it that way. And then because these logs are both adding, you can time them. Um, another way you could have done that is we have log base 5 of x plus 2 log base 5 of x. Um, so it's just one of them plus another two of them is 3 log base 5 of x and then move that 3 up to the top. So that's a lot of practice on your log laws. Um, at that point we can get rid of our log so we'll take 5 to the power of both sides. So we have 3x cubed equals 5 to the power of 4 and then to get rid of our cubed we have x is the cube root of 5 to the power of 4. Um, to get this in the form of a, b and c in the ones that we want, um, I'll take out the 5 cubed. So that 5 to the 4 would be the same as 5 cubed times another 5. And then I can take 1 out of the cube root. So I've just got 5 and then the cube root of 5. So my a and c are both 5 and my b is 3 for that one. Perfect. So um, my next one, <laughs> where they get slightly worse, is solving this equation. So we've got exponentials, um, which the opposite of our exponential is our natural log. So first we have e to the 1 minus 6x equals 4 times 12 to the power of x. And we want to solve this equation for x. This time our answer will be in the form 1 minus ln a over b plus ln c. So that looks like a lovely form, but a, b and c are in integers. So if we start with our equation so far, um, I'll try to rearrange the right hand side um, and make this look a bit nicer. So if we get rid of our exponentials, take the natural logs of both sides, we have 1 minus 6x equals ln of 4 times 12 to the power of x. And then we can use our log law on the right hand side then, which should make it a bit nicer. So because they were times in, we can add them. So we've got ln 4 plus ln 12 to the x. And then using our power law, we can take that x down to the front. So now we have a nicer equation in terms of x. And then it's just like changing the subject for x. So I'll take my ln 4 over to the left hand side and I'll take my 6x over to the right hand side and then I can factor out x in the right hand side as well. And then it's looking more like what we want our answer in the form of. So I didn't think there's any more rearrangement there. We've just got 1 minus ln 4 all over 6 plus ln 12. Um, this was a past paper question from a few years ago. Um, so if you're revising for any assessments at the moment, <laughs> these are the ones that you can expect. Um, another type of question that I wanted to go through is this solve the equation given your answer in exact form. So this will turn out to be a nice quadratic. It looks horrible because we've got e to the power y and e to the power of minus y. But if we just have those as x, so if I let e to the y equal x, then our equation is just 2x minus 30x to the minus 1 is all equal to 4. And I'm sure you can solve that equation for x. It's much nicer to solve. So if we multiply all of that by x, I have 2x squared minus 30 equals 4x. If I take the 4 over to the left hand side, 
then I've got a nice quadratic in terms of x. Um, I will half all of those values in there and factorise it, but at that point you could just put it into your calculator to see your two solutions. And then we should have two solutions for x, 5 and minus 3. But from the start, I said that x was e to the power y. So we've got e to the power y equals 5 or e to the power y equals minus 3. Um, one of these will have a solution and the other will not. So we'll have no solution for e to the y equals minus 3 because we can't take the log of a negative number. So our only solution is y equals ln 5. Um, that's an easy mark at the end to make sure that you can't take the log of any negative number. Um, so don't forget that one if you're revising at the moment. Um, my next one gets slightly worse. So hopefully you're happy with the last three questions so far. Um, with this one, it's another solving the equation, but it's slightly different to the last one. So we have x to the power of log base 2 of x all over x squared, and that's equal to 8. So what I'm going to do with this one first is try and rearrange it to make it look a little bit nicer. So we have x to the power of log base 2 of x equals 8x squared. Because we've got a log here, um, I'm going to try and solve it using more logarithms. So if we take the log of both sides, so I'll do log base 2 of both sides. So that was log base 2 of x to the power log base 2 of x. And then that's equal to log base 2 of 8x squared. Then we can use our log laws and hopefully make this look a little bit nicer. So on this first one, we have a power. So we can always take this power down to the front. So that becomes log base 2 of x and then another log base 2 of x because I've just moved that power down to the front. And then the next one, so we have a product. So I can separate those by adding them. So that was log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of x squared. Um, this gets a little bit nicer because we can work out our log base 2 of 8. Um, if anyone knows from memory what log base 2 of 8 is, you can put that one in the chat. Um, or you can use your calculators for the age. We've always have a calculator at A level. You don't have to rely on it. <laughs> um, with that, the left hand side of that, log base 2 of x times log base 2 of x, a nice way to simplify that is I just have two of them times together. So it's just that squared. So I've got log base 2 of x all squared on the left hand side. And then that's equal to my log base 2 of 8, which is 3, because 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Um, and then finally, that log base 2 of x squared, I can bring the power of 2 down to the front as well. So if I rearrange this all onto one side, I've got a lovely quadratic in terms of log base 2 of x. Um, I know at A level, you practice a lot of the quadratics in terms of e to the x and e to the 2x, which are a bit nicer, but this is a tricky quadratic in the form of log base 2 of x. So if we solve that, um, you can at this point, if you wanted to, let log base 2 of x equal y, um, and then we're just solving y squared minus 2y minus 3. And then we'll get our two solutions from that. So straight from your calculators, you can get that one. So y equals 3 or y equals minus 1. So if we put them back into what we had, that was log base 2 of x equals 3 or log base 2 of x equals minus 1. And then to get rid of that log base 2, we'll do 2 to the power of both sides. So that was 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, or 2 to the power of minus 1, which is, um, that should just be a half. Um, 
so that's our two solutions from that one. Um, I know at A-level you get to practice a lot of the exponentials um, in quadratics, but I thought I'd throw in an extra logs in quadratics to make that a bit worse. <laughs> Um, the one other thing that I wanted to show you was a simultaneous equations one. So there's not too many practice questions out there on simultaneous equations um, using logarithms as well. And I don't think they're people's favourite questions when they do come across them. So in this one, we have log base 2 of y equals log base 2 of x plus 4. And then my second equation, h to the power of y equals 4 to the power 2x plus 3. So I just want to solve this for an x and y. So first, I'll try and get rid of the logarithms in this one. Yeah. If somebody has you just asked a question. Yeah. So it says, could you go into more detail about brackets log times 2 brackets log times 2 brackets? Oh. I'm I, so just impressed get, I just don't get how we got there, it says. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. I don't know if you're so, reading it like that, but I wanted to make sure you knew exactly what I was saying. <laughs> I'm so impressed that somebody managed to type all of that part out. <laughs> but it was horrible for me to type it out as well. Um, <laughs> yes, this part. Log base 2 of x to the power of log base 2 of x. Um, it does look really horrible, and this is why I chose the question. Um, but we've got log base 2 of x, and that x is then to the power of log base 2 of x. So exactly the same as what I've done with this one, with the 8x squared, splitting it up to the 8 and the x squared. Um, in the next line after that, I just took the 2 down from the x, so that our log base 2 of x squared is the same as 2 log base 2 of x. So it's the exact same here, it just looks a lot worse. So it's the power law because we've got x to the power of log base 2 of x, we can take that power down to the front. So I've took that log base 2 of x down to the front there and then all we've got left there is that log base 2 of x. So another one. <laughs> there. So I'm going to just swap them around. Um, and then because we've got two of them times together, um, that's just log base 2 of x all squared. And then it starts to form um, quite a horrible quadratic. Perfect. You've said thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you. I understand it now. So that's really, really helpful. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Um, thanks for asking questions. Though. Do stop me if you get stuck on anything. Um, I say this as I reach my worst question. <laughs> so um, I'll try and do these simultaneous equations um, and we'll try and get rid of the logarithms. So hopefully I've just got nice linear equations, not even um, quadratic in these ones. So the first, my first equation was log to the base 2 of y equals log base 2 of x plus 4. Um, with this one, I'll try and move the logs onto the same side so that I can do the opposite, take two to the power of everything um, and hopefully make it look a bit nicer. Mm -hmm. So if I move over that log base 2 of x, then I have log base 2 of y minus log base 2 of x equals 4. Um, using our log laws then, log base 2 of y minus log base 2 of x is the same as log base 2 of y divided by x. And then to get rid of my log of base 2 on both sides, it's just 2 to the power of each one. So that's just y over x equals 2 to the power of 4. Um, so 2 to the 4 is 16, and I'll rearrange that for y. So we've just got y equals 16. Um, so if our first equation, instead of saying log base 2 of y equals log base 2 of x plus 4, if it just said y equals 16 x, it would have been a lot nicer to start with. Um, so I'll try and do a similar thing with the second equation, and then hopefully we'll have some nice linear simultaneous equations to solve that. So my next one was 8 to the power y equals 4 to the power 2x plus 
Um, in these exponent questions, there are a few times where you have to kind of spot a pattern. So four and eight are both powers of two. So eight is two cubed and four is two squared. So I'll sort those in first. Um, and then from your laws of indices from the very start, when we've got a power, the power, we can just multiply those. So we've got two to the power three y and then two to the power two times two, which is three. Um, if I expand that one, so two times two x plus three is just four x plus six. And if we've got two to the power something equals two to the power something else, then these two exponents must be the same. So we must have that three y is the same as four x plus six. So that's a nice uh, equation to work with. So I think we'll work with that one. Um, and my y equals 16x. So these look much nicer than the horrible log equations that we got first. And I'm sure if you were asked to solve these simultaneous equations um, in any test this summer, you'd happily do it for the marks. Um, so if y equals 16x and we have 3y equals 4x plus 6, I'll sub in my y as 16x. So we have 3 times 16x equals 4x plus 6. And then lovely linear simultaneous equations then. I'll multiply that out, get the x's on the same side and solve for x. So 6 over 44 is the same as 3 over 22. And then finally, we can just sub that back in to the y equation then. So y was 16 times x, so 16 times 3 over 22, which simplifies to, I think, 24 over 11. Um, usually at the end, whenever I've done this question in the past, people have said, oh, I must have got it wrong because they're not nice numbers. Um, but we don't have nice numbers anymore at A-level. 3 over 22 is a perfect answer. <laughs> and so it's 24 over 11. Um, so that's our two solutions for x and y. Um, they were a mix of some of the worst logs and exponentials questions that I could find. So I hope that if you're at the point of revising at the moment, um, I hope that helped. Um, so thank you for asking questions and keeping up with that. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions? You've you treated us there, didn't you? Some of the worst ones you could find. Thanks, Greg. It really was. At the start, I was going to try and keep up with you, but I couldn't. But the students obviously could because they, they haven't actually yet, um, apart from that one question that we had, uh, they haven't actually yet asked any more questions but I will just give them a moment because I know there's a bit of a delay just in case there is anything that wants to that they want to put through just before we do finish so whilst they're doing that if they would like to ask a question um, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, for that revision session today Rianne uh, it was really helpful if you actually understand all of those crazy numbers you know how does your brain work like that it's incredible <laughs> um, but yeah uh, and hopefully, uh, thank you very much for everyone who came today. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Um, and if there's anything else that we can help you with, please do let us know. If you want to have a look on our website, there's quite a lot of different um, events that we can offer out for you as well. And I think a question, as I thought might, has just come through. Just one moment. Oh, somebody has just said, thank you so much. It was really, really helpful, which is oh, nice. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> uh, let me also just get what I'll do is just put our events page into the chat, just in case anyone is interested in coming to any of our other events. And also just to be able to see the next lot of the revision sessions for you as well. I'll pop yes. those in there. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, again. And hopefully we'll see you at another one of our events. Thanks. Bye.